This week we have UFC 291 taking place in Salt Lake City, Utah. We will crown a new BMF, and Jorge Masvidal will be there to put the belt around the new BMF. As you all know, Dustin Poirier and Justin Gagey are the two combatants in play here. Are you all fired up over this whole BMF ballyhoo the way you would be over a proper title fight? What two fighters are leading the way for the next BMF fight? So two-part question there, and Fada, we go back to you. Yeah, I mean, listen, how could you not be fired up over Justin Gaethje and Dustin Poirier fighting? I mean, those guys always deliver BMF title or not. I mean, these these guys are have entertained this fight after fight after fight. They're always fight of the year candidates, if not the fight of the year. Uh, their first fight in 2018 was amazing. I mean, when I think of it as someone who pulls all-nighters to watch these fights, there is no way for a second that I would even think of dozing off when these guys fight. I'll make sure I get my coffee in. I'm not going to lie, pulling all-nighters is hard. Anyone on my side of the world knows that, but I know that I'm going to mentally prepare to make sure that my eyes don't even set my clothes when these guys fight. And even if they did for some reason, the the craziness and the madness and the wildness is going to cause the commentators to be screaming and it's impossible to not be glued to your screen when those two guys fight so i don't i mean bmf for not i just think that these guys are both much watch tv and when you look at stylistically the way both of them fight uh it, it's going to be fireworks um and in terms of the second part of the question uh the bmf title and i don't know how they're going to go moving forward is it going to become title defenses or are they going to do the same thing with masvidal where they just put a fresh matchup but if they do a fresh matchup, I would mm. go Max Holloway, Conor McGregor. I think it's time that we saw that mm. fight again. I'll always, I'll never forget my sit down with Conor when Holloway just skated uh, by and he pointed him out. And Holloway and his team were so excited about that. They felt like that was the seed, as, uh, <laughs> as uh, Joey Diaz says. But like, you know, they felt like that was what was going to set up the, the rematch. It didn't happen, but it could very well happen when you see the way both of their careers are going. McGregor's never pulled out of a fight. He's always entertaining. Say what you want about him. He always delivers in fight night. Same thing for Max Holloway. Who hasn't that guy fought? He's fought literally everyone. You can't not consider Max Holloway a BMF. So I think if I was doing a fresh matchup, uh, I would do Holloway and, and McGregor too. I think it would even make sense right now. Okay. I like it. All right, goes. How about you? BMF uh, title. Is it as exciting as when they headline with a proper title? And also, who do you think would be, let's say they did this annually, who would be a good uh, set of candidates for next year's BMF? Mm. Well, look, this fight, it, it sells itself, right? I mean, both guys, their, their reputations, we just know what we're in for. We're going to be excited. Does the BMF add any extra excitement to it on my hat? Like, I don't hate it, but at the same time, like, to me, it just seems kind of weird that you can't lose it. That That's what's uh, a little strange to me. And I feel like the fighters that are involved, yes, you, what you do in the cage is very important. But I also think like you got to have like a little edge to it, right? Like Nate Diaz and, and Jorge Masvidal have a little edge to them. I think that's why it made it uh, a BMF. Aside from what they're able to do in the cage, the edge that they brought into it, that persona, I think has a little bit to play with. And when you look at Justin Gagey and Dustin Poirier, they're two of the nicest dudes you'll ever meet in person, man. So in a way that that BMF title kind of falls a little bit for me. But if you were going to do another one, I don't know that I could point to particular people, but I would point to a division. I think Bantamweight, definitely. Do the 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 BBMF over there, the, the baddest Bantamweight motherfucker in the world. Like, that would be dope. And I guess if I have to give you a name, maybe Henry Cejudo and Marav Devalishvili, those two guys can get pretty edgy and, and can kind of get in each other's faces. I think that would be a fun fight. I like it. Good job, Ghost. So that one caught me off guard there a little bit. Um, all right, Danny, how about you? Are you fired up? You know, some people are saying in the chat that maybe this was the UFC's way of squeezing 80 bucks out of us by just throwing that on there. Maybe they shouldn't do it annually, blah, blah, blah. But how about you? Are you I mean, okay, for one, who isn't pumped up about it, right? So more or less the question is, are you more pumped up than, for example, let's say the Vancouver card? No, no, no slight at the GOAT or anything like that, but Aldana versus Nunez, that wasn't mm -hmm. everyone's cup of tea either. No, I'm definitely pumped up. I mean, for all the reasons that Farah and Ghost pointed out, I mean, this fight is just amazing. We saw the first one, and the second one just promises to be just as good, if not better. Like, this this fight's just... You're, you're grabbing two of the most exciting fighters in the history of the sport. Like, the amount of performance of the night and fight night bonuses that these two have is just ridiculous. 
Um, and they just happen to be elite fighters too. So you, you're kind of checking all the boxes because sometimes these wild fights usually are seen at a lower level, not really at the very elite where there's a lot on the line. So there's a lot of refinement, a lot of calculated risks. These guys just kind of, again, it's a car crash, like Farah said. So I absolutely love this fight, but I also do agree with the people on the chat. Um, it, it is a way to jazz up a pay-per-view. It is a way to make a pay-per-view feel like a pay-per-view because the UFC has had this routine of making pay-per-views have a title on the line, right? We've seen a few that have not, right? Like the probably the most recent one, uh, Masvidal versus Colby Covington. But really outside of a few things uh, like Nate Diaz and Connor and this and that, they really always want to get a belt in there because it feels important. It feels special. It feels like these numbered events, um, they're must-see. Maybe not because they are they don't have the biggest talent, but at least for just relevancy, like it is something big happening in the sport. Um, I don't like the BMF title being in circulation. Um, again, style-wise and, and just savagery-wise, yes, these two are bad motherfuckers, as Go said, but... Um, I think the BMF title, title was more than that because we can apply that to a lot of people. Look, Dan Hooker, if we want to stick around in that same weight class, look at what he did against Jalen Turner. There's a lot of guys that are ready to bite down under mouthpiece and throw down. I mean, you can do Michael Chandler as well if you want to stick around in that same weight class. So I, I don't really think the BMF belt is about that, is, is, is a little bit about that, but also about kind of some edginess about the street factor outside of it. And that's what the, the Nate Diaz and Jorge Masvidal fight was was exactly that because Nate Diaz has always been about it. Jorge Masvidal as well. Uh, it's just one's 305, the other one's 209. But um, it just kind of was perfect for that moment. And it felt like if there was ever a title uh, on the line, and also these guys were, were superstars, but at the same time, maybe not at the very, very elite level to be challenging for belts or at least be winning them. Uh, so it kind of felt fitting to honor them because they are badass fighters with a belt. And I feel like by making more of these fights, you're diluting the original idea, the historical moment that that fight had. Um, and I would hate to see it in circulation because you're diluting furthermore the 155 pound belt. Um, I am happy. Hopefully this, because it's technically a championship fight, this does mean that more money is going to be allocated to both Gagey and Poirier. So I'm happy about that. I'm always happy for fighters to be making a, a, a bigger buck and I will never hate on that. But um the whole BMF idea, like, I don't, I don't know. Something's missing. I don't think it matches 100% the original spirit of the BMF belt. Uh, but am I excited to watch it? Yes. And I would pay for the pay-per-view even if there wasn't that title on the line. And I've done it before. Again, I just mentioned Masvidal versus um, Colby Covington. It doesn't have to be Connor always. So I would have been fine with this just being a, a pay-per-view so long as, you know, you got good fights in there. I don't need to see a title fight every time. But, um, you know, that's not the that's not the rules that the UFC plays with. So I guess we're getting a, a BMF title fight here. But, yeah. And I think you nailed on something here. The BMF originally maybe gave an opportunity for Masvidal or Diaz, who didn't win a major belt, um, a chance to have that, you know, um, have that moment. And The Rock presented it. You know, Duran walked out with Masvidal. It was in yeah. New York City, for crying out loud. It sold a lot of pay-per-views, so it. The fight definitely carries weight in terms of the history of MMA. It has to be the right time. Maybe annually isn't enough. I don't know about World Cup style every four years. That might be too too long to wait. But I do like Poye and Gaethje uh, for the next one. For the I'd next say set. this. I, I think that fight feels more... The BMF title for this pay-per-view feels more out of necessity than, than the actual UFC going and looking at that fight and be like, you know what? That's actually fitting for the BMF belt, in my, in my opinion. Uh, but again, I'm not hating on the fight. I'm going to watch it. It's an amazing fight. I just hating on the idea of the BMF belt coming back to live. I would have loved to see that be just exclusive to Nate Diaz and Jorge Masvidal. I would have loved to see Carlos Condon and, and um, Matt Brown fight for, for it. Like, you know, there's just, there's just certain names, man, that had just been some badasses over the years and putting them in the cage where that belt on the line would be pretty classic.